Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider some of the subtleties and some key observations associated with integration by parts. So let's do the first one, which is fairly easy, and I just want to dispose of that quickly, which is that the choice of antiderivative doesn't matter. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go down here to these formulas. Okay? So you can do it in the UV notation, in the function notation. You notice that after identifying the expression you're trying to integrate as a product and deciding which piece to integrate, this little g is the piece to integrate, you have to find a function capital G. We here? Yes. You have to find a function capital G whose derivative is little g. So you have to sort of on the side integrate little g to get capital G. If you're using the UV notation, that's just saying after you've identified what is dv dx, you have to figure out what v is. So to integrate that. Now, when you are integrating, there isn't a unique answer. Rather, there are there is a bunch of answers which differ by constants. So you actually have a number of different choices for the antiderivative, which is v or gx. You have a number of different choices for this, all differ by constants. And you may be wondering which one is good. Is there some rule which says that you should pick the best one? And if you don't pick that, can you run into problems? And the answer is that it doesn't matter. So Whichever antiderivative you pick, the answer with the final answer to the question will be the same. And moreover, the complexity of the problem will not be different. So the choice of antiderivative doesn't affect the complexity of the of the second integral which you need to do here. Okay? So it's it's something you don't have to worry about. Maybe you weren't worrying about it as it is, but in case you were, it's not something to worry about. Okay, so the next thing I want to touch upon is the equivalence of integration problems. So what do I mean by that? Well, integration by parts doesn't always solve an integration problem, but it does tell you a relationship between two integration problems. So what is it telling you? Well, it's telling you that These two integration problems are equivalent where going back here, then I'll just write down where f prime is f, derivative of each capital thing is the corresponding small k. Is it still g? Okay, so what it's saying is that if you want to integrate a product of two functions, you can integrate a new product where what, what change have we made? What how is this new product different from the old one? Uh, you differentiate one and integrate the other. Yeah, I differentiate this capital F and integrate it little g. If you want, you can also see it in the UV notation. It's a little clearer here. It the original integral integrand is u times dv dx. The new integrand is v times du dx. So I have differentiated u and integrated dv dx. Okay, so these two integration problems are equivalent. Now, what I mean by saying that equivalent, what I mean is that if you know how to do one, you know how to do the other. It doesn't mean the answers are equal. Because if you go to the actual formulas, then this integral is this function minus the other integral. Right? So it's not that the values are equal, but a strategy which tells you how to do one integral will also tell you how to do the other integral. Okay. So next I want to touch upon repeated use. Okay. Yeah. So, so suppose I want to integrate f x g x to f times little g. Now, if I use integral integration by parts once, then I have this new integral, which is little f x times capital g x, right? And little f is just f prime. So I'll just write it as f prime times integral. So what it's saying is that in order to integrate this function, is e it's equivalent or it reduces to integrating this product where I've differentiated f and integrated g. But now you can use integration by parts again. And the right way of doing that is you differentiate this piece again. So I could use integration by parts again. If I use it a second time, I'm going to get capital F double prime x times, and I'll, I'll skip the dx, I'll just write double integral of g. Okay, so in order to do this product, 
it suffices to do this new product where I've differentiated f twice and integrated g twice. Is that good? And I can keep going like this, right? So in general, the kth step over here would be I've, I've differentiated f k times and I've integrated g k times. So you can keep doing integrals by parts many times. Now I'm not saying that these integrals, the integral of this is equal to the integral of this. If you actually do the integration by parts, you saw that the first time you do it, you get fx gx minus this, right? The second time you do it, you'll get another product on the outside. So you'll get the relationship between this and this one will it will have like some extra terms as well. It won't just be equality between these. Okay, so the general expression will be complicated. I want to work it out. I don't want to work it out right now. But it's not saying they are equal, but that this can be reduced to that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the circular trap. So this is the wrong way of using integration by parts. And you usually won't make this mistake, but there are some situations where you might. I just want to say this clearly. And this is saying that if you want to use integration by parts a second time, what you should not do is integrate back the piece you got by differentiating. Okay, so let me just illustrate what this would do. So suppose I start with this product. So here. Okay, so this is, copy this down, is fx, I'm, I'm using the same notation here, f prime is f and g prime is g. Now, suppose I, I decide that to do the second integral, to do the second integral, I'm again going to use integration by parts. And suppose I decide that I'm going to differentiate g and integrate f. So I'm going to differentiate this, which I got by integrating, and I'm going to integrate the piece which I got by differentiating. Then it's going to be g times the antiderivative for f. So basically, my new capital F is my old little g and my new little g is my old little f. Okay, so if you if I then think about how this formula works, it's going to read gx times capital Fx, that's the antiderivative for little f, minus integral of, the derivative of capital G is little gx Fx capital Fx dx. Is everything in here? Yes. So, now, what happens when you simplify this? What do you get? You get the original problem back. Right. So, these two cancel. This, you get two minuses, you get a plus, you get the original problem back. So, what did this tell you? It's always integrate the one that you integrate in the first place. Well, so basically, it told you, you should definitely not do it this way. You shouldn't integrate back the part you got by differentiating and so because what that does is you get back the original thing so you got no new information in this picture what would it what what it's what are we doing we are going like this and then coming back like this if you want to think about it in the uv notation what you're doing is you are going from u dv dx down here going from u dv dx to v du dx but then you are treating this v as your new u and so on and then you are going back along this. Okay, so this that is not a good strategy. You should generally, if you want to do repeated use, you should do it generally like this. You differentiate again the part you got by differentiating the first time. There may be some third way of restructuring the product and doing it generally repeated use like this. It's definitely not like this. Okay, another small thing I want to say is that. There are other strategies for products. So it's a non-exclusive strategy for products. What I mean by that is if you see a product that you're trying to integrate, you should check for other ways of doing the product. In particular, you should check for what? Even substitution. Yeah. Okay, and and maybe then some other strategy like right, using a trigonometric identity or something. But definitely u substitution is, is one thing you should check for. 
and in in a future video we will look at how to decide whether to use u substitution or integration at once oops spelling mistake u substitution okay